not time
As the rain it sways in the old monsoon and the pain it preys on an open wound. It's cold, it's cold, it's cold. Gotta break the stranglehold. I have sealed myself, I have cried my tears. Now I steal myself to defy my fears. Now be strong, be strong, be strong. I am right where I Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to. Okay, my 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 my. I'm using a slightly. I updated my OBS, and so my microphone bar is a little bit like duller than it used to be. So for a second, I didn't think you could actually hear me, but I do see it moving in response to what I'm saying. So you can totally hear what I'm saying, which is amazing. But we do go ahead and have um, game number one coming up between Fountain Snipers and Clouded Minds. Before we get there, we do a couple of bans. Fountain Snipers has banned out Braxis Holdout, which means they're going to lose this series. I'm just going to let you all know that now. Every time I cast a team and they ban out Braxis Holdout, they like uh, end up losing the series. Legit, actually, that has happened every single time it's happened, except once. One team, it was CCS1, Can't Get a Big Stupid, managed to win despite banning Braxis. Every other time a team has banned Braxis and I cast them, they lost. We also do have uh, Garden of Terror being banned out by the Fountaineers. On the side of Clouded Minds, we do go ahead and have Dragonshire and um, to Tomb of the Spider Queen being banned out. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that atomic. Thank you. There is a 30 second delay, of course, because we have to maintain competitive integrity here. So there is going to be a delay in between when you say something and when I could possibly reply to it. But that's okay, I'm casting the game. We are going into Infernal Shrines, so uh, let's get in there. This would be a great time for the draft to actually start. You guys said you were ready. Let's go, 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 go. There we go. Infernal Shrines. <laughs> To our infernal shrines, one of the absolute uh, best. I don't know why would I ban you. I mean, now that now that you like listed as an option, I, I'm kind of curious. I'm like, huh? What possible reason would I have to ban you? Make your case. So we do go ahead and have Infernal Shrines is one of the most balanced maps in the Wait a minute I have a suspicion about why you said that No, I don't want that one Okay, no. My suspicion was wrong. I thought that Brox may have like redeemed something, but no, no redemptions have come through. Oh, it's Braxis, not Bruxis. Bruxis. Although at the same time, you don't play this game, so I I can forgive you for not actually um like knowing how to spell it. Brackus the Braxis. We do go ahead and have Johanna being banned out, one of the like most offensive tanks in the game. Not going to be available for this one. We do go ahead and have Tychus. So that to me says they're going to look into using a character with a large health pool. Maybe Diablo, maybe Deathwing, maybe Cho Gall. Imperius is also banned out. That again, Imperius does have a level one talent where he can absolutely shred people. Basically, every time he like um, he'll mark people with his ability, and every time he absorbs a mark, then they lose 2.5% of their overall health points. And he can stack up to three marks, so he just starts chonking you for 7.5 per auto, especially late game. It's a, it's a problem. Oh, there's my new social. I, I wish I could make that like trigger even a little bit less than it does. I think it goes every two hours, which is the maximum I can set up for. We're going to have Chromie coming out from Silver Jackal. Thank you very much for rubbing your bits all over my stream, Weenus. I appreciate you. So we do go ahead and have the blonde. Man, this is just a blonde draft coming so far. Silver Jackal coming out with the Chromie. Chromie, one of the longest range heroes in the game. We do go ahead and have Anduin and Kale Foss coming out from uh, Peach and Ruffian.
We 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 got all the people in here. Yes, welcome to my stream. Come in. Welcome to my parlor. Wait, is Weenus okay? What do you mean? What, how is Weenus holding up? Is you make it sound like Weenus got punched in the face? Weenus? What did you grab and of who? Inquiring minds want to know. Would you go and have a new Brock being pulled out by Arco? Not the high health hero I expected with the Imperius and the. So that may mean we actually have a Deathwing coming. Um, but it looks like their opponents are not afraid of that. They're banning out Kerrigan instead. You go to the bright wing. Here I had them set up to be like going the death wing because they had banned out both of the big and then they banned them. Just, just, what? I don't, I don't, I, 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 Making myself just a little bit bigger. We're gonna go and have a Lumpico come out with a Hanzo. And then so we will go ahead have Sonya versus Leoric. This is a matchup I prefer Leoric to, but it definitely can go either way. If Sonya can go ahead and spin through Leoric and make it very, very hard for him to land his drain hope, then it's definitely one that Sonya can kind of bully Leoric in. We're gonna have Arco come out with the Anubarak. Anubarak, Anubarak, Anubarak. There's not yet a tank on the side of Cloud of Mines, so who are you gonna go into the Anub with? Of Anduin into Brightwing. Very big, long rangey Pokecomp. So, with the Blaze and the Sonya, they should be able to actually like uh, close the ground. Anubrak does have a hard time keeping both uh, Sonya and Blaze off of their backline. And then, like, Leoric isn't really good at interception. Like, can you get on top of people, but can't really stop them? But here we go. We're going into the game. I'll get the predictions up so you gambling fiends can go in and get in there. Fountain Steppers versus uh, Cloud of Mines, game number one. Let's go! Rog screen. Alright, so here we go into game number one. Coming in on the side of the Fountain Snipers on the blue side of the battlefield. We do go to have Arco playing the Anubarak. Lampako going to be riding around on the Hanzo. The dead Hanzo. Ooh, scoop, spooky spooky. We do go to have Silver Jackal on the uh, Goblin Chromie. Arusty is going to be coming on Brightwing. And Mosley, uh, former captain of the Arcanauts, is going to be on the Leoric. Meanwhile, representing Clouded Mines. Over on the orange side of the battlefield, we do have Peach playing Anduin. Ruffian will be on the Kale Foss. Trelania is going to be on Lunara. We do have Kian is going to be on um, the Sonya. And then Starlight playing that there Blaze. So we should go ahead and have a look at our talents at level 1. We do go ahead and have the Mana Attic coming out of Kael'thas. Um, target practice would be the Hanzo. Interesting. I do, I, I, I do hate this in that... Um, like, it doesn't actually tell you. It says 0 5, but I like. Does it get to 1 or 5 whenever you've hit one hero with all three shots? I guess I guess that makes sense. But I'll be honest, I do not, do not, do not know. Rockets bets are up! Oh, I guess 30 second delay. Did I set the bet for not very long? I have to look at that the next time I run one. If it's only set up for like 30 seconds, that's a problem. Oh, 
No, no for beepers and fountain snipers. Unfortunate. All right, we do go naturally. Go ahead and pick that up. There's like a little bit of a uh, engage going on to the bottom right now. Lobico is standing in the area. There is a time trap we can drop right here, but no one really going in. Uh, Starlight does miss with the charge, so no one will be hit by that. Meanwhile, we do have double soaking. The camps in the middle are fighting. It does look like the orange camp will have a slight advantage because the minion wave is going to help push into it. John, I, you would think that, but Brockus has asked for bets, like, all, all the time, despite the fact, like, he'll just miss the fact that bets came up and then, like, ask where they are. Although I think he's on mobile a lot, so it kind of explains why he can miss them. I don't think mobile, the interface, shows it as well as, like, desktop does. But we do go and have Star Knight. Star Knight! Da -da 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 like this could be engaged. Sony is actually coming down for this though. They want to fight over this. They're ready to move in. So he shows up and that does cause Fountain Snipers to go ahead and back off at this point. So he's gonna go ahead and ride back away. Bye bye Kia, we love you. A very standard thing my uh, team says whenever I end up like coming down to help and then leave again, they're like, okay Rocco, love you, miss you, bye. Is Trelania, yeah, as well as Ruffian and Peach. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. No answering a uh, shaman camp on the side of Fountain Snipers. That's gonna be a problem because the uh, point is already up, and we will have a Frozen Punisher coming out. Frozen Punisher is definitely the one that you want to have, it is the best one to push with. Hello, Melbo. Looks like you followed me. How dare you! Lots of sand falling on the Star Knight, gonna be a bit of a problem. We do have a lead right now for the side of mine, but Star Knight having a hard time, but you know what? Star Knight does not care. Star Knight says, I have no health, but uh, neither do you. Arco goes ahead and almost goes down. Star Knight having to disengage. Lavko has almost no health. There's Kian. Kian's like, I will fight you all. Living that barbarian dream, don't you know? Don't you know? We do go and have Chromie and Lunara just go ahead and like off each other. A little bit of Romeo and Juliet action. Okay, they didn't actually murder each other, but you know what? Shut up. 33, 31, this is super, super, super close. Lopko has no health. We're gonna take it out. Mostly gonna be the next one to go down. We do go and have a momentary advantage for Clavid Mines as they go ahead and run into this. Arco goes ahead and moves, tries to go in, tries to finish this off. Only four and five left, but it does look like we're going to have the bug go down. The bug gets squished. What about the other bug? The fly bug is going to survive. That is four kills in favor of Clavid Mines as the frozen Punisher goes ahead and starts marching down the battlefield, moving towards the gates of, Cla of um, Fountain Snipers. Thing, Melba. You would say that like, you can't snipe things that have no life. However, how do you kill a zombie? You shoot it in the head, which is what snipers do. All right, we do have the front wall going out. The uh, fort will stand, however. They were not able to push it and get that. And meanwhile, up top, it doesn't look like the wall went down. Because keep in mind, we did have this camp pushing. Um, I won't say unopposed, like, obviously they came up and, well, maybe they figured it up, maybe it just ended up running out of a, uh, wave. Both sides gonna go ahead and try and pick this up right about quick. Mosley does go ahead and say, okay, you got this. Oh, Mosley's actually moving down. There's gonna be a fight, but this time it will be the offlaner for the blue team that joins up. Does look like the fight is disengaged. I'm gonna go ahead and try and take this and use the easy move away. A little bit of indecision. I think they had mostly come down, they had mostly go back away, and then they fought for the camp. 
Not really the order you want to go for. Uh, well, the level 10s are the reason they kind of called that off. We have level 10s picked up on the side of Cloud of Mice. Leaping Strike coming out of the Lunara. Phoenix, Light Bomb, Leap, and Bunker Drop. I gotta say, a lot of L Talus, Light Leap, Light Bomb, and Leaping Strike. If you, if you have a hard time remembering which one's leap and which one's uh, leaping strike, it's the difference between ho 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 and ha 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 ha. I can't actually do the Lunar and the laugh. I'm not, I'm not capable of it. It's not a skill I have. We do have level 10s now on the side of Fountain Snipers. We will see the Cocoon, Dragon's Arrow, Emerald Wind, Entomb, and Temporal Loop. We are up to one stack of target practice done. This time both teams will go ahead and take their Shaman Camp at about the same time. The altar has not been um, announced, although it will be an Arcane Punisher that comes out of it. It's actually a Shrine, not an altar, but you know what? Shut up! And um, nobody asked you. <laughs> They are moving up. Leo, 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 are you going to be in trouble? Mostly going to be in trouble. Although not really. Leo is very, very difficult to gank. I don't blame them for trying, though. I think they were like, well, we need to come up here. That will still give them the shaman. Mostly we'll have to stick around for just a little bit. Just a little bit. Arca goes ahead and gets stunned. Um, does try and back out. The rest of was not quite up on top of Star Knight's booty. So not able to go in and get the bug, but there is the leap. The leap, we do get Lava Code being taken out. Nice move by Kian. Kian actually ended up hitting two of them. There are too many heroes, there are too many female heroes in Hodge that have very, very distinctive laughs. There's Lunara, there's Sonia, and then there's freaking White Mane. <laughs> I have more of a snicker, to be honest. <laughs> a lot of damage going through, but super, super, super lead of the skeletal minions coming out of the side of. Uh, but, but, we got to take a lot. There's the Entomb comes down. We do go in and have one versus four on Trolling is going ahead and doing a little down dancey dance. Our Arcade Punisher is coming out. We do go have a kill onto Arco. Goodbye, Anubarak. Like they did not get the middle fort with the first punisher, but they're definitely getting the bottom fort with the second one. And it goes down. And it goes down, down, down. Whoa. Nice stun coming in. Followed up with the blaze stun, and goodbye, my friend. I wish you would step back from that little I don't know why I always get wallflowers stuck in my head whenever I'm, um, like playing this game. I see it a lot. So we seem very far away from the action. I usually have, a, I think, this one set up. Yeah, that one, that one should be good. So both teams once again going ahead and picking up their Impaler camps. They get that nice and taken care of. These camps will be coming up in about 40 seconds. Sonya moves up here trying to make sure that uh, Leo can't get any real value done. Um, level 16s are picked up on the side of Cloud of Mines. 
Mana Addict is done, up to 34 stacks actually. Still only one stack of target practice. Considering you've gotten eight kills, I'm surprised Hanzo hasn't been able to land uh, that, like, three hits on more heroes. Even funnier if it was Leo was the one he'd actually gotten so far. That would amuse me. Do I have a Mortar Punisher coming out of the middle shrine? Which is interesting, we have not had the top shrine activate yet. A bit unusual. Sonya is backing off. Kind of sense that the team's disappeared, but here's a good push in coming from Cloud of Mines. Cloud of Mines says, okay, we don't see you for a second. That's one way to answer it, be like, you know what, we don't know where they are. Rather than just being careful, just start pushing their stuff down and they'll show up. So we're at 20 seconds away. All camps are currently picked up. We have uh, Rusty down here trying to side soak. Get in get ahead of everyone. We'll have to see. Looks like the main engage they have is Blaze. So if um, Bounce members can kind of stay back and avoid the Blaze engage. They don't have a great way in other than that. Like Leap is their other engage. Okay, we do have a cocoon used on Suvet. Very, very... Sonya, Sonya is running to start out. There's the light bomb. Goes in and catches Kian. Kian dives into the bunker. Try, um, gets into the homie bunker. Wants to try and stay alive. There's the Emerald Wind coming out. Trying to push everyone back. We do go and have uh, Sonya going down. It is one for one. As Anubrak and Sonya are both no longer in this fight. But very, very low health bars. Will you be able to do anything about it? Rusty trying everything they can. A lot of damage on the Lompico. Lompico has to go ahead and move back. A move back. Yeah, the, the Kale Thought spreading fire is just doing work, although there is sand falling everywhere. I love Undertale. Oh, mostly doesn't lose the train hope, and they do, but they do get a, uh, Hanzo does go ahead and kill off. Who, who knew that the, the guy with the hunting bow could kill the deer? I know, I was surprised too, but Mortar Punisher is coming up. Star Knight very, very low. Will they try and get them to get around? Yes, Star Knight does go down. They go ahead and move that. A lot of experience, very, very needed. However, they do go and have a big old, big old Chromie Sand cannot save her from that. It's like, I'm gonna put up a sand trap and freaking two tons of Punisher just land on her little gnome head. Alright, looks like the Punisher will not quite get the middle fort, but while they were here, they did send a contagious contingent up top and went ahead and got the top fort. They're like, there's got to be a Punisher up here pretty soon. Like, we've had three Punishers so far. How in the world have we not had this one yet? I object. Now it does look like we're going to go ahead and have Fountain Snipers clean up the bottom of the map. Go and try and get this taken care of all right about quick. Starnet goes in. We have, there's the leaping strike trying to go to the top of Arco. Arco does get out. Nice, nice, nice. We do go in that Lunara very, very far out of position. Hobie Bunker comes up right next to her. Trillania does go ahead and get hit by that impale, but no immediate follow-up. Both teams are level 19. This would be a good engage if uh, Fountain Snipers had a good angle on it, but it does look like there will be a withdrawal for the time being. There is the um, impalers were coming in here trying to get a lot done. They did go and get some damage done here. Up to three stacks on target practice so far. 45 stacks on Mana Addict. 
Vio is going to go for the uh, like more damagey build. Not going to be trying to cut their damage. I'm going to be trying to do more himself, up to 89 stats. So as you can see, like Vio usually has a very, very, very slow attack rate. But as this gets um, higher and higher and higher, Only up to 30%, so basically every four attacks happen what used to take three. Exactly what you want. Uh, once again, we do have the shaman camps being taken by both teams. 20s all. We do go and have rewind, obviously. Play of the game, intense wins, intense wins, buried alive, and piercing sands. On the other side, we do get burn notice, ignore pain, inner fire, flame thrower, and intensifying toxin. Great alive, very, very big. Mosley can make a great play with that if you can catch people in the same area. Impale is used to go ahead and clear this out. Might have been a, a chance to move in whenever that stun was down, but not going to happen. And still nothing up top. We have the bottom uh, shrine activating. Let me close the Punisher once again. Now this is a 17 minute Punisher, so it could it could rip through, and keep in mind this is the like, lane if they prep the most, they being Fountain Snipers. Alright, up to 15 already, here comes the uh, Scouted Arrow, a lot of damage coming up from the Hanzo, Starlight looking for an engage, there's the- oh my- Argo, you need to get out of there. Just go ahead and burrow in. Uh, Barry of the Life comes in. Big Silence comes down. We do have a pull out onto the blades, but Kian is right in the middle of the entire enemy team. Nothing around them. There is the Life Bomb. Life Bomb goes in and catches, and there is Mosley going down, being the first one to be taken out. Argo not, not, not very healthy at the moment, trying to go ahead and get his little bug booty right on out of there. We have Mosley going around trying to suck health back in and get back into this fight. They have 35. They only need five more, but none of the blue team is back in that area. Hanzo, can you be a hero? Can you get five more? All right, there is the uh, blade. They have two to go. 39, 39, 39, 9, 9, 9, 9. And yes, the first Punisher is coming out in favor of Fountain Snipers. They are looking at Kian, trying to go and get this done. A lot of sand comes down. We do have Hanzo finishes off the uh, Barbarian. Now, with that being said, we do go out of the Frozen Punisher. Frozen Punisher will Sylvanas these um, the base defenses. Although it may not have the chance, the base is going down very, very, very quickly. They are pushing forward. They have the advantage that uh, all their people are up. Sony is down for another 43 seconds. This is the moment that you need. This is the chance to balance the map. Boom. There goes the ice to be out saying, hey, base defenses. Guess who doesn't get to help out? It's you guys. And they are moving together. There, yes, the ice does go ahead and catch this. Now they can fight under. There's a big silence coming down onto, I don't even know who that is. That is Anduin. Explains why Anduin didn't save himself. No pullout gain from Anduin when Anduin is the one being pulled. There is Starlight. Big, big, big uh, stun comes down. And goodbye, my friend. I wish you would. I'm not gonna sing that song yet. I refuse. You can't make me. Punisher is down, but are they going to go for the win right here? They do have um, their tank and their opponent's healer are gone. It does look like Arco is going to be the one. There's a big intensifying uh, win does come out. Goes ahead and tries to get all of this out of there. Polymorph comes down onto Keon, but a lot of damage to Arco. Here comes Trilladia trying to go in and get this. There's another uh, win pushing everyone back. So you can't engage on us. Would you go ahead and have the cocoon coming down onto the Lunara? Lunara is stuck in the web. She says, I hate this. I'm not, I am not bug. Mostly very, very far down, but there is the silence coming down. Uh, Kelvoss is down. This is probably the end of the game. We do go and have in a amazing comeback, surprising at the end. Fountain Snipers do win game number one here on Infernal Shrines. The Bamba Kali Kelkin Mobin. So, I, I can I can be a little bit bigger, I think. 
There we go. That looks good. So, looking at the stats at the end of game number one, we do go ahead and have, um... Uh, put that off there. Um, number one in damage is Silver Jackal, coming with 62,000. We do go ahead and have 50,000 onto Trelania, and then 49 on Ruffian. High damage all around. Uh, Healing-wise, Rusty does win the Healing Race, doing 72,000 healing. Then we do go ahead and have Experience Contribution. Um, Leoric does win the Soak Race, but just only by uh, just over 1,000, 25, 24,000. Talent-wise, we got them. Take them in a Storm League, go and win with them. Look at my beloved offlaners. We do have Consumed Vitality, and then... Oh, interesting deal, Peasants. There are a decent number of Merc Camps, but that's still not what I would expect there. Drain Momentum, so is able to move at full speed while also doing the Suck. We already talked about the Mace build, and then Buried Alive. Meanwhile, Sonya does go for the Slam build. Poison Spear for that just extra bit of damage. We do have no escape. Giant Slammer and then that Ignore Pain. Very, very normal build from Sonya. With that said, I will see you in game number two. Don't go anywhere. It'd be awesome.
Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. What, sorry to interrupt the amazing concert by Miracle Sound, but we got a game to cast. We are here on Towers of Doom. This is uh, typically the last cast of a series, but it also was um, picked by Fountain Snipers. So that's a very, very bold statement. Fountain Snipers is saying this is the last map. We are going to win here. We can't go into a game three. We will not have this to end the series on. So Fountain Snipers is making a statement right now. We do go ahead and have the Crow, the Crow Mint, the Crow Minium coming out. Um, first band, they said the Crow Beak was very, very good. You you guys were extremely, extremely, extremely good and not letting us move around like we wanted to. So no Sand Mage. Basically what I'm saying is that uh, Cloud of Mines is basically coming at this with the Anakin uh, strategy of battle. Just take the sand out of the battle, first and foremost. Malthiel is removed. Malthiel, a very, very good double soaker. Probably but probably the fastest double soaker in the game, especially on this map, though he is made of paper, can definitely be ganked. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry. There is one hero that is a faster double soaker than Malfiel, though granted it's the Vikings, so they kind of cheat. You can't, you can't double soak faster than the hero that's literally in both lanes at the same time. The Crusade calls. Not really. Johanna did not answer. Johanna put the phone down and let it go to voicemail. I have said this a lot of times. I really, really, really do feel like that we need a uh, situation where there needs to be voice lines whenever someone's banned. I want to hear them say, like, um, something like that. Like, the crusade goes unanswered. Well, it ain't time yet. <laughs> Robot, what are you talking about? Of course we're live. I'm always live. We do go and have Junkrat being picked by Ruffian. The freaking rubbish rodent coming out here. Gonna be blasting everyone. You can't you can't walk around with Junkrat. Junkrat just leaves his crap right. Junkrat is basically the hot equivalent of a toddler. Which, you know, you know how you, whenever you're like, have your nephews over, and you always have to be careful because they leave their freaking Legos everywhere. And you're like, ah, God! That's, that, that's what it is to fight against Junkrat. We do have Anduin and Mephisto command. Now, Mephisto is very interesting. Mephisto is the answer to um, a heavy frontline comp. So they're picking it with only Junkrat showing. So that just means it's a super comfort pick from Silver Jackal. Rusty going to come out and be with Anduin. Well, you might be a Labyrinto, but uh, we do have Leora coming out, and Leora is most definitely a lot. Stukov, I think the jury is out. Is Stukov alive or is Stukov? I, I, I always think of Stukov as a zombie. I mean, look at his freaking face. Look at his face. Oh, uh, we do have Stukov definitely looking like a zombie, but I think technically he is still alive. Just infested. You know what? Actually, going by that, Junkrat does not look particularly not like a zombie. <laughs> We do go and have a um, May being banned out. They say you've already got one um, Overwatch hero, you don't get another one. A new Brock going to be taken away from Arco says no. We did not like being web wrapped. Keep your bondage to yourself. This is a family channel. It totally isn't. So we're going to have, we do not yet have a tank or an off laner or a double soaker. So that Arco goes in and picks up and we do have, and that's why I, I was going to say, the only one that can double soak about as well as Leoric is uh, Zul. Um, now here's the thing, Zul cannot fight Leoric. Leoric just completely, ca Leoric's E completely nullifies Zul's E. So Zul does not want to fight directly into Leoric, but Zul will summon skeletons whenever he takes people out, and Leoric will have to spend a little bit of extra time. He won't be as efficient clearing, so it kind of puts things at relatively even. Tremble before me. There is Star Knight coming out, going to be the Diablo. Um, Vala coming out from Trelania. Ooh, do we actually have... We have, I think, all... Do we? No, darn it, we don't. I thought we had all uh, four realms red, like represented by Cloud of Mines, but no, there's no one from Warcraft on that team. 
We're on the other side. We have two Warcraftians, two Diablo Inns. So we have more of a uh, smorgasbord coming out of uh, Cloud of Mines than we do. Only Warcraft and Diablo represented on the side of Fountain Snipers. As Ballstead is picked up by Lompico. So, with that being said, we will go ahead and be disparuing. I'll get the gambles up one more time. Put your put your money where your mouth is. It is coming. By the time you hear this, it should be up. In case you're on mobile. Prepare yourself for battle, heroes. All right, coming in on the blue side of the battlefield, we do have Rusty playing the Anduin and being AFK. We have, oh! To be continued. Don't want anyone to be able to come over here and um, like be able to see if people are deploying into a weird location, a weird locale. They might be trying to cheese top, you don't know. What the heck is that, Polywer? Polywer. So, um, let's go ahead and look at stats while we are here being, uh, paused. We do go ahead and have, oh, it looks like right now, um, in terms of kills, it is zero to zero. <laughs> this is such a weird stat screen to look at. Like, obviously we have to, ah! What the hell? That was not a countdown! I object. We do go and have Rusty coming in on the Anduin. Arco going to be on the, the Muradin. Mostly on the Zul. Silver Jackal on Mephisto. And Lampico playing Falstead. They are your team in blue. I need to get back to the correct Five, screen. Three, two, They're your team in blue. One. They are the Federation of Ferocity. The they are Fountain begin. Snipers. Meanwhile, on the orange side of the battlefield, we do have Kian coming in on the Leoric. Star Knight going to be on Diablo. Trelania going to be on that Vala. Peach playing the Stukov. And then Ruffian on the Chocolate! They are your team in orange. They are the Confederation of Chaos. They are Clouded Minds. Let's go ahead and see this. Uh, this look like the teams are moving in very, very quickly. Slightly ahead are Fountain Snipers. I like that discount with Star Knight. There's Silver Jackal saying, nope, you step back, step back. Arco had to hearth back. Arco was taking a lot more damage than I actually saw. I appreciate you, Gibby. I was like, uh, and that's how I actually remember there was 30 seconds delay, because I was almost like, wait, what? No, I'm not. I'm like, oh, right, there's a delay. I'm smart. Nice, nice, nice stun. Star Knight's not going anywhere. Except back to the Hall of Storms. That counts as location. Boop, boop. So that is first blood to the side of the Fountain Snipers. The Fountains will run red with blood, ladies and gentlemen. I guess that, that actually should be like relatively expected. Whenever you snipe a fountain, you're like shooting a fountain with a gun. The fact that blood gets involved, probably not the biggest surprise of your day. not going to be a successful invade. We do go ahead and have Arco move back through the science puddle. I don't want to say this one more time, or just one time. My team always calls that the floor anus, and I have to, when I'm casting, remember, okay, don't call it that. I'm allowed once, but I, I always want, I always have to stop myself from saying that. Wait, oh my god! Okay, so the first blood was not first blood. Look, I was distracted by announcing the team. I can't be keeping up with little things like somebody died. So Diablo goes down one more time. I just only raised my hand and did a little dance, and then I remembered that the camera wasn't, like, on me. So, it didn't matter. I'm showboating for no reason. We do got have Lobico coming in doing uh, quite a bit, just blazing this down. 
This will be the first altars coming up in just a second. Middle altar will be the flavor of the day. So it looks like we love the from the up top. Both of these being picked up by both teams. But the bottom was where Matt Zorro Jackal trying to get this right now. Lopico goes ahead and tries, but no. Vala goes ahead and gets a W through the entire thing. Most of a good bit of damage. There is a, f a flight coming in down below. Both teams wait, trying to go in right now. There is a uh, junk rat trap right below. This is going to knock Arco back. Both teams project resist right now. Trilinia trying to go in and get this done, but Kiana has no health. And here comes the Fountain Slingers running in here trying to get this done. Star Knight going to be going down one more time. And it looks like mostly going to go in and try and get this channel up right about quick. And crack up, boom! There goes four more shots to the core of Clouded Minds. Much different game than game one. Game one, it really felt like Cloud of Minds had it for most of the game until they lost it at the last second. Um, but this is, of course, the map of comebacks. You thought we had a comeback on Infernal Shrines, just you wait. This is the map that feeds into comebacks. I tell you what. So this will be gone and picked up. Arco does move back as the rest of the team does show up to their own uh, objective or mini objective. This isn't quite like Hanamura, where the camp is literally more of an objective than the actual objective. But it is important. That was a really interesting documentary I saw on vampirism, and how um, back in like Victorian times when it was written, the idea of feeding on blood was very, very normal because things were, it was a lot more like dangerous and people would end up bleeding a lot more often. Um, so it was to, whenever someone died, the, the big kind of key was they would never bleed again. And so blood became kind of um, sacred and very, very noticeable. Um, and then vampires kind of fell out of favor up until the 20th century when things got a lot more sterile because no one ever bled anymore. But in the 20th century, we got a lot more procedures, a lot more surgery and a lot like better. Um, and so whenever someone would start bleeding heavily and have to go to the hospital, they were dying, and that once again actually made, um, blood becomes kind of sacred and very noticeable, and very attributed with being alive. Which is what kind of caused vampires to come back to the mainstream. It was really interesting. Would you go ahead and have Star Knight? There's a lot of bombs go ahead and land. Um, Star Knight being very, very low, just roughing this up to go ahead and move back. There is a massive, 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 uh, butt puddle. Oh my god, a butt puddle! That's amazing, I love that! A lot of people from Star Knight Star Knight. There's Arco going through trying to go and stop this, but no. Star Knight going to pop Soul Shield in order to be able to stay alive for just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. And did you go ahead and get another four shots? We are down to 28 health on the core of Cloud of Mice. They are a full level down. Technically two levels, but that won't last for very long. Level 10s are out. I have not even pulled up talents because I'm a nub. Did you go ahead and have Avatar coming out of the Murden? Mighty Gust, Light Bomb. Consume salt, interesting. And then the poison Nova. She's toxic now. I'm in a singing mood tonight and I apologize. Here's the butt puddle. It was going to be great, I'm going to call it that, and people are going to come in that weren't here at the beginning of this particular cast and be like, why the hell does she call it a butt puddle? So now we can actually look at stats. Um, in terms of damage, we do have Mephisto leading the way. Definitely a comfort pick coming out almost uh, one and a half to one damage over Junkrat. Ruffian coming in. And then we do go in and have Vala come out with 17,000. Uh, in terms of healing, Stukov is out healing the Anduin by a little bit. 
and then in terms of the experience, Zul is out soaking the Leoric. Actually, by a lot, I'm surprised it's by that much. Um, it's over a thousand already. Normally, at the end of games, we have a thousand. Yeah, Babuja was like weirdly trying to flirt. It's a little bit. Huh? What you doing? There we go. It's always annoying because I, I swear I need two scenes for this. Because this looks good for this screen, but then at the end of the game it's going to be slightly off. Oh, right, 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 right. Alright. Oh, wow, we actually had Trelania have to leave the game. I guess something really did come up. So, I guess back to looking at talents. So, we do go and have 16 uh, puncture arrow up to 16. Did not go for the uh, Gambit quest. Junkrat does have a uh, taste for explosions up to uh, 47 stacks. I wonder what it caps out at. Because that definitely looks like it has a cap, but it doesn't actually say anything. Oh, up to 40%. The doi? Oh my gosh, I can't believe you call it Star Anise. There's someone out there named Anise that is like super offended right now. <laughs> oh my god, John, that's amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually have a command called um butt puddle, and it's just gonna be called that and it'll pull that up so people actually know what we're talking about. <laughs> Okay, uh, Trelinia's not a he. Kian, how do you not know that? Wait, no, I always do that. Trelinia is. I, there's something about the name that always throws me off. I apologize. It's Ruffian that isn't. I am awful. I apologize. Okay, now they're coming back in. Good, I'd like that. I think it's because whenever I was, um, like, going to college, uh, Serial Experiment Lane or something very like that came out, and I loved it. I haven't seen it in years. Um, but yeah, like, and so I just, the name Lane, Always, always, always have that association for me. I've crossed it several times, I just never get through my stupid head. I love people are like, wait, Rock has a Discord? I'm like, it's in the like description down below and there's a command for it. I don't know. The people who don't know about it just never look at my information and they make me cry. I'm gonna and I get really sad. Not really. Also, at this point, you can't bug me to stream more. You're not allowed. Hard no. Oh, we got Star Knight takes a bunch of. I gotta say, this this um, they're doing a really good job keeping the Diablo in place. Here's a big old, big old. We do go and have level two on both sides now. Uh, go, go and get a lot of damage done on that. Um, Rip tire coming up. We do go and have, we already call out these, but we do also have in two lightning breath. Flailing Swipe, Rip Tire, and Strafe. Also did Diablo, but you know what, that doesn't really matter. Super Jackal! There's the butt pedal coming out. More, 32 to 24. We now have 75% uh, of the health of the blue team is the red team. Or if you want to, oh, 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 Rusty goes in and gets caught. There's a big uh, silence comes out, and they do go and get a call on the Anduin. Arco looks to be in a little bit of trouble. This is where Cloud of Mines going to get the turnaround. They went ahead, they've only had one kill this entire game, and they went ahead, you know what, let's triple that. 
And they did it. They did indeed. Apparently having level 10s and the heroic abilities, it makes a difference. That was really good. That was actually, I don't know how timed that was, but they were just like, okay, right as you teleport back to your base, I'm going to flip you. So it's like the game pseudo glitched and was like, oh, okay, well, you go back, you go back. Oh, actually, you're still in the process of being thrown. I have never seen that interaction before. That was cool. So we are up to four kills to five, level 13's all, and we do have a single altar spawning right now. Alright, we do go to have Star Knight, Peach, and Ruffian. And clear both sides will pick up their uh, sappers that will fight down below as the fight as as above as is below. All five five fingers to a fist are here. There's Ariko goes in and gets stunned. Yara goes in and gets silenced. And goodbye. Bye 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 bye, Dwarfie. Don't you want to listen? Yeah, definitely. Uh, having tins makes a difference. I feel like this is the tale of both games, where one team's doing really really well, and then tins come online, and that flips on its head. Because we now have an experience advantage. Oh, Trillidia does actually get it done. Trillidia goes ahead and launches those in. So his vengeance comes across and slams into the into the um, nexus of Dr. Slavas. So this is where you start the uh, Towers of Doom chokehold. You have five forts five forts versus their three at this point. Fun fact that most everyone knows, but a few people don't. On here, it actually shows how many shots um, are coming out, although it doesn't count the, the uh, cores. So three versus five. People are like, Rocket, can you look at the damn fight? And I'm like, but I'm doing an educate. There's Mosley. I don't know the rest of the team is here close enough. We do go ahead and have actually Mosley uses up their ult. That's a bit surprising because Mosley's death timer is only 36 seconds and the ult timer is 80 seconds. So here's the triple ultra phase. Once we'll be coming up before uh, Mosley comes back. Take the altars and put an end to the Gravekeeper. So it does look like top is not being contested. Bombs aren't really being contested either. There is 10 shots coming across from 28 down to 18. Ba bam And for the first time this game, we do have a core health advantage on the side of Cloud of Mines. Was not able to get a uh, second iteration of that trick. And it does look like they will be losing this uh, fort. Alright, here comes everyone else. We're trying to move in onto this bottom port, trying to recapture it. This is the thing, this is what I, uh, what I refer to as the uh, Towers of Doom chokehold. As long as you have it, your opponents can't really move out. It controls access to two of the locations. And of course, you do have the Sapper Camps, so just march down this lane. Gives you a lot of advantages. Oh, 
Oh, I'm just, I actually thought Arco was dead a thousand percent, but no. Arco will go and go back. Now, Arco did take a uh, dwarf block at level one, so will not heal up quite as quickly. Does not have third wind going on. We do have the split uh, objective up top. Mostly, mostly. Be swift here. Okay. <laughs> Little bit over aggressive Star Knight. This is a four versus four because Junkrat did go to the other altar. There is Rusty. Rusty. I like that they keep hitting Rusty with the Intune specifically because Rusty cannot uh, pull himself out. Oh, Arco survives. Anduin does not. Let some survive. There's Trilady, goes ahead and knocks out several shots. Down to 10 health on the side of Fountain Snipers. And they're going to bring that down to 6. Alright, here's everything else. They're starting to move back down below. Starting to put pressure. Now here's the thing. They only need two altars to win, or one altar and two shots for the separate camp. But they would have to knock down um, the bottom keep one more time. That looks like the plan. They are uh, starting to put pressure, trying to get these camps. We do go down the strafe comes out, so there's a just bit of damage, but the bullet does go and back off. Does not want to try and move into that too, too, too aggressively. There's a big stun coming under Arkham. Oh my gosh, just a flambe in your, uh... I, I don't know. <laughs> it does look like we do have Zul trying to push down top, but he has a long way to go. A lot of skeletons to help him out, sure, but... This is a single altar face. This is what we need for Fountain Snipers. Both teams are level 20 at this point. We do go in and get Acrobat from Vala. Extra Oomph, Controlled Chaos, Hellgate, and Buried Alive. On the other side of the battlefield, we do get Rewind, Nexus Frenzy, Censure, Mortal Wound, and Consumed by Hatred. If they can knock this down and get one shot in, they can win right here. Alright, and knock it down they can. Peach is moving down to go ahead and channel. There are five shots coming across. Now everything is on these three sappers. If any of these cross the finish line, but the finish line is a long way away. And Starlight does not have health. Starlight will go down. We'll come back almost immediately to take those souls, but oh, they're not so much. Bit. Oh my god, the Fisto! So, about that, uh, this could be the end of the game. Not so much. They're going to go ahead and put the reverse vice back in. I do not blame them at all. I think that's the absolute right call. Now they cannot six cap. Their opponents are going to be just about back up, but they're going to they're going to do whatever damage they can. Gustavo comes out. We do have uh, Diablo coming out as well. Decent bit of damage. They need to be a bit careful being this aggressive. There is two versus five at the moment. Here come their allies. Oh, she hope thank you very much for coming in. Oh, we are in the middle of the cast, so maybe not the uh, best talky talk to you. Oh, Trillian takes a bunch of damage. Would you go and have a uh, ball? Ball left the game right as she died. Oh, that's tragic.
So, uh, hi. Uh, Shield, thank you very much for the raid. I didn't even, I didn't. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, those of you that haven't been here before, I'm Raka. I do a lot of casting on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I do normal streams on Friday and Sunday. You can always tell if you look at the title of my stream, where it says, actually, I guess the title of my stream is down there, uh, where it says cast if I'm casting, play if I'm playing. Uh, right now, we are in game number two between um, <laughs> Fountain Snipers and Cloud of Minds. Right now, uh, Cloud of S Fountain Snipers has won game number one. Cloud of Minds is on the very, very er edge of winning. They have the core of Fountain Snipers down to a single hit point. But, 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 um, Cloud of Minds has just come back and is claw, or Fountain Snipers have come back and are clawing their way. They just completely wiped. They kill off Vala. Vala did drop from the game. But I do appreciate I do appreciate the raid. I appreciate you coming over here. What what were you playing tonight? What amazing things were you doing? I am on a 30 second delay. Be aware of that. Whenever I am casting for competitive integrity, we do have to make sure that, you know, players can't come over and be like, I wonder where my opponents are. I'm going to look at Rocka's stream. So obviously if they look over here, they'll see the stream as it existed 30 seconds ago. Poor Trelania. Yeah, it looks like Trelania just um just had too much going on and he ended up uh like disconnecting out. Yeah, I hate to see it, especially in a game this close. Da, 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 da. So, uh things to look at while we're sitting here. Once again, looking at stats, we looked at them last time, but in terms of hero damage, Mephisto was just running away with this game, um, did amazing amounts of damage in the first part, doing 117,000 damage, and right now we're only eight, like 19 minutes into the game. Um, in terms of healing, we do have Peach. Wow! Peach almost doubling Anduin's healing. Hello? That's a thing to look at for sure. Oh, that's that's terrible, She-Hulk. I mean, I, I I cannot play first person shooters to save my life, um, or even third person shooters. Like, I just I don't know what it is. My I've got I've got a controller, and I'm like, and I want to aim, and I'm just like, yeah, and then I'm dead. And it's like it's a sensitivity thing. But if I if I end up like lowering the sensitivity or raising this, whatever makes me turn faster, then I'm just like, okay, I need to. Aim. Also, 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 every time I try and play this first-person shooter, I'm just like, I don't know what the buttons do, and I swear, every, like, half the controller makes me crouch. With no, no, no question, no flag or foul. Half the controller makes me crouch. It's a problem. Poor Trelania. Looking at talents that we have so far. Actually, we have all the talents, so I guess I shouldn't say the talents we have so far. Um, looking at our lovely offlaners. Man, you guys are all in the way. I can't really see. But Leoric does go... Oh, interesting. Ocean Renewal. Usually I see Leorics on this map because they are double soaking. Take a different level one talent. Um, the one that lets you heal off of Clear Mind and Minions deaths because you are clearing out seven of them every, like, two seconds. Um, lowers their speed. And then, once again, the range... Oh, in the range talent. That's cool. Once again, let's go for Special Elite Mithril Maze. That's the kind of DPS talents. Um, Special Leech get, basically has you do, you know, bonus damage equal to 2.5% of the hero's maximum health. So as you're bringing it down, you're just like chalking them for the normal damage plus a little bit extra. And it also heals Lyric. And then Mithril Maze makes Lyric attack even faster. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> I always have this like mental image of just Lyric being like. Ba -ba 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 Mephisto's level 20. Oh, yeah. Consuming Souls deals bonus damage equal to 10% of missing health. Uh, if it kills a hero, it'll cast again. So, if you have, like, a bunch of low health heroes, you can just press the consume. I bet that's actually what happened when, when Mephisto just killed a whole bunch of people all at once. It was just like, and boom. Oh, hey, someone died. And boom. Oh, hey, someone died. And boom. Can you imagine that ult in a game with Lost Vikings where there's, like, three, like, eight heroes on the field? Somebody's got to be next to death. I guarantee it. I 
Oh, it looks like the router actually died. So I do apologize. I've run out of things to say. Um, so we will be right back. Um, I'll go back to the in-between game. Let you go ahead and enjoy the dramatic and mellow sounds. Hello, Flop of Miracle of Sound. And we will be right back once we actually get the game started. Because, I mean, I look, I, I know, I know I look cute. I look amazing. But, um, do you guys have, I, I do think listening to amazing music is just better than staring creepily at my face. And if you disagree, you're a creep. Stop it.
All right, here we are. We're back in. Uh, unfortunately, again, Lady did end up being killed right before he disconnected. So that's unfortunate. Do not let the grave keepers cronies before you. They they got close to a six count. They do go ahead and get seven shots going in, taking that down to 15. And now they're doing what I like to refer to as the towers of doom roulette. They just run around and be like, okay, we're gonna go in and you know just continue to knock these down. Um, our opponents will do the same thing, but they can't really get any forward momentum when we're constantly just going, because they, they can't, like, this is dangerous. If they slow down too much, then they actually do risk being six-capped. If you, if you control all six of these, then your, uh, core just starts shelling continuously. Every single time they get a turn in, there's seven shots per, so they do need three altars to win. It's kind of funny. We we've ended up like um. Oh, it's a shame they don't have this one pushing in as well. These will run in and get these, but obviously that that only helps so much. There's some giggling happening. Now, th now here's the thing. Fat Cybers need to take this guy off the map. This guy will do four damage, and when you only have one health, then four damage is a lot. <laughs> we have lost a tower. So no, they're gonna go and take this. That should trigger um with them trying to rebalance and take a bear four. I'm a bit surprised they actually gave those up as easy as they did. But if you go ahead and say, okay, we just need to make sure not to fall behind. Here are four shots coming. That's going to knock the core of uh Cloud of Mines down to eleven. And put an end. They will leave Zul here to channel, channel this, knocking their opponent's core down to seven. And here's the big, oh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, do go and get a lot of people down. We do have the little uh, bar coming out on top of his own Starlight. A lot of damage, Kian does go down. Starlight has no health, uh, tries to move in. There's a big old swipe, but no, Diablo will not survive this. And with three health, both teams are one, one, one shot away. But here's the thing, if this goes down, they're all, they can actually get that one shot in two ways. Vala goes in and gets rooted by the Zul. Not, you're not going anywhere, Vala. Where are we in terms of these guys? They will be coming up in five seconds. This could end the game right here, this camp. Because if all three of these guys, of course, they will take the longer route and come around this way. But if they get past this line, then uh, that, they will do exactly three damage and end the game, giving us a domination for Fountain Snipers. Coming back from an incredible, like, brink. There's two, and... I think I saw it, I think I saw it. Yes, indeed, I did does go through. They do manage to get that third one through. And with a domination, we do have Towers of Doom going the way of Fountain Snipers, who managed to win this whole event. Okay, maybe not whole event, maybe single match, but you know what? Still, great job. Let's go ahead and see if we can get an interview, ladies and gentlemen. I can't find... I'm so frazzled I can't find the lobby. All right, and while we wait to see whether or not I am joined, let's look at the stats for like the third time. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprisingly, we do have Mephisto continuing to be number one in terms of damage, continuing to just outpace everyone else in the game, um, healing-wise. We do have Stukov, um, still 136, lording over in terms of the stats. Oh, yeah, and this looks like we are being joined by the Fountain Cybers. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. 
Hope that was interesting. We tried our best to make it as stressful as possible. Well, you succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that was quite something. So, first question: Do any, any of you need emergency medical attention? Because I don't want you to the interview if you need to be seen by someone. <laughs> <laughs> Just rusty, Get but by. that's actually a long-term thing that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, there's no helping. <laughs> So, first of all, very much congratulations. Kind of, kind of a gimme question to start us out. Uh, how are you guys feeling right now? Good. That was definitely very close. It'd be fair to say thrilled. Yeah. 1 to 21. Bring it out. Oof. So, yeah, that was... Because that was the thing. Um, game number... It, kind of both games, it really, really felt like Cloud of Minds were just on the verge of collapsing over you guys um they definitely kind of had your your number until that like you got the one object and you just push all the way to court in game number one and then game number two i don't i don't like honestly i think everyone thought you had lost that one until abruptly oh, you yeah. just started clawing back into it oh yeah that's what we're known for is our <laughs> desperation to win so we just claw through the grave <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it is it is a kind of a testament to us not getting, you know, we don't get angry at each other and tilted and all that kind of stuff. And that's sometimes how we pull some of this stuff out, I think. Just keep talking. We just refocus and move forward. You can't go dark. You can't go quiet. So what I'm hearing is that maybe you should change your name from Fountain Snipers over to, like, Dream Ruiners. <laughs> <laughs> Hope Dashers. <laughs> so you can do Dream Eaters, because, you know, we take it into ourselves and we... Get our own dream. Yeah, yeah, we'll work on it. Yeah, we'll work on it. <laughs> we'll workshop that. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have to ask. So going back to game number one on Infernal Shrines, game number one, it very much felt like it was very, very even um, until tens, and at tens, your opponent started to kind of pull ahead. Um, did you do anything special other than just like what did you do to turn it around at that third objective? Or f I think it's actually the fourth objective. Because that was the first one that you really kind of felt like you controlled rather than... I think it's some other ones you ended up squeezing out from the verge of death, but you, like... It was what... You did like, get the Punisher, but you wouldn't be able to do anything with it? But that, that, that last Punisher, you actually... It went much better. And was that just... Was there anything special you did there? Or was it just you had 20s? I think we just kept talking. We didn't let ourselves go quiet. Get down. We It's hot, so you can win... You know, with none of your keeps, and they have all their forts and keeps, you can still win. Comeback yeah. mechanics. Yep. <laughs> well, and especially in uh, Towers of Doom. <laughs> you can come back <laughs> yeah. even if you only have one hit point left. Yeah, I definitely. I, I was a bit surprised, although I understood it, where you guys managed to get up to the point where you control f five of the six towers. And then you just sort of like, you, you ran to the bottom, took a camp, and then ran to get the boss. And the boss, I understood, the camp kind of surprised me. What was it the happens. What was the thought process <laughs> on giving them back a tower in exchange for a camp? Uh, just not realizing the boss is going to be up that soon, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were just going, going, going. We had talked about the boss, but then, and we they were at top, taking their keep back. And we could have gone down and taken bottom, but we were too concerned that they were going to be close enough to boss to get started on it. So we just said, let's just go posture around boss and get it. Yep. And credit to uh, uh, credit to Arco, who he's too cool for interviews, I guess. But he uh, he was really snapping up the quick calls and getting us in all the right places. So and then uh, Silver as well for that kind of stuff. So just. I don't know. Just keeping our cool, I guess. Or at least acting as if we're keeping our cool. <laughs> Helps a lot. Yeah, I am. Yeah, no doubt I'm a little sweaty over here after that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I definitely am as well. Um, so, the last question, because I always ask this of everyone, even though I kind of know the story with you guys specifically, but um, where did the name Fountain Snipers come from? It's our meme on when we made our name after they made the fountains invulnerable in me ding slash atomic onion now uh, made our logo he actually went to was it try mode and just kept trying to get that perfect shot i, I want to look at your logo again now right on 
second? Oh, I can't really get it. I don't know where it's a uh, Nova kneeling and sniping a well with the precision strike, so it's bouncing off of it. Yeah, actually. So I don't know how I, you got I've that seen shot. your like logo so many times, and I never really like thought about what it actually represented. <laughs> I, mean, I saw it was Nova, but I did I did I did not realize that was an in-game shot. Yeah, yeah. He took um, a lot of time and yep, he looks did good. Get it, yeah. He figured it out anyway. There you have it. I've now blown your logo up so much, man. This will take me like five years to get this back into a. <laughs> 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 all right. So those are all the questions I had for you. Let me go ahead and turn it over to you. Are there any shoutouts that you want to give? I know you already kind of gave some of them. But I would be remiss if I did not give you the opportunity. I can start. Um, shout out to you for casting. Always makes it more enjoyable and a lot more fun. Uh, shout out to NGS for not giving up on this dead game. <laughs> it's a lot more fun than, you know, playing quick match all the time. Here, here. Shout out to our team for keeping our cool and bringing us the domination. And shout out also to Cloud of Minds for giving us those sweaty matches. Got to give a shout out to my friend Ali. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'm blanking on the rest. Oh, well, then I'll take over. Thanks to all my friends and family that are watching so <laughs> much. I have so much friends and family, seriously. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, right. thanks. <laughs> thanks for the cast. Thanks for uh, thanks to uh, the team, Lomp and Arco, who aren't here, but are definitely important parts of the team. And uh, thanks to our foes this evening. That's like, we... Um, you know, we pulled those games out pretty, pretty close. So yeah, uh, they made us earn it. Yeah, we're not strutting around or anything. You know, that was those are some pretty darn tough games. So, uh, yeah, thanks to them and kudos to them because we were just a hair away from getting whooped. And I'll pass it off to Mosley. Uh, yeah, they pretty much covered everyone that I could ever think of. Uh, I think, <laughs> except uh, Atomic Onion, our sub, always covering our butts whenever one of us is gone and uh, is there at the beginning of practice every day waiting. So I appreciate him for doing that. That's it. All right. Well, I'll let you enjoy the after party. Very much congratulations on the. I'm going to say unexpected domination, but I don't mean that as in. I thought oh, no, you were fair. going to lose no, going no, in. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> well, I'm just going to be that in both games, it kind of looked like it was going against you and then it didn't. <laughs> I just told Onion that we did it on purpose to make it interesting for him. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't but... have to be polite about it. We were getting our butts spanked. <laughs> Little high knees spanked. So. <laughs> no, that's, that's what it looked like. That's Rusty's jam. I was going to say, part of the core for my channel, so thank you. Thank you for staying on brand. <laughs> Not a problem. Well, again, thanks for casting. I hope you have a great night. And again, uh, thanks everyone who watched. Thank you, thank you. So that's going to do it for me for tonight. Um, I, if, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Raka. As mentioned, I kind of said this halfway through, but I do do casting on uh, Wednesday and Thursday and Saturday. So you can catch a lot of Heroes of the Storm matches then. Um, I do do uh, just normal games on Friday and Sunday. Right now I'm playing Metal Gear Solid 4 on Friday and Pokemon, my very first Pokemon, it is Fiery Red on Sunday. And then Monday and Tuesday, uh, no stream. I'm busy those days. So if you want to hit that follow button, you can know when I'm uh, streaming. If you want to hit SLS support Discord, you can actually like really get an up-to-date schedule if you really want to come by. Because I'll appreciate you. And other than that, we're actually going to go over and raid MFCEO. Um, that is Danny. Danny is playing Heroes of the Storm tonight. So um, there are no other NGS matches going on, but hey, he's one of our casters and we support him. So let's go over there. <laughs>